The message this morning is tailored towards us examining ourselves. Check yourself. Examine yourself. Second Corinthians chapter 13 and verse 5. That's where the aim of the message is coming from. Second Corinthians 13, 5. It says, Examine yourselves whether you are in the faith. Prove your own selves. Do you not know your own selves that Jesus Christ is in you unless you are doing it? Examine yourselves. Check yourselves. Ensure that you are in Christ. The Bible says, He that thinketh he stands, let him stand, let him fall. Don't think you are in Christ. Be assured, be convinced that you are in Christ. Because the product of those that are taught are in Christ and the of those that are really in Christ are different. After all, the Bible says, by their fruit you shall know them. Today I'm going to tell us a story. And the story is found in the book of Luke chapter 15. Luke chapter 15. And we want to start this story for today from verse 25 to 31. Luke chapter 15. From verse 25, is a very well known story. That was the story of the prodigal son. Or oh, prodigal sons. Amen. Everybody, we were taught about prodigal son, singular. But I'm going to tell you that there are prodigal sons, plural. One was very obvious. The other one was secret. I intend to address the secret one today, which is the most dangerous. One day, my father in the Lord says there are three kinds of mad people. <laughs> category one are the one that is mad and naked on the streets. Category one, that way you can say I'm running away. Category two are those that are not naked. They are dressed like you and I, careful and collected. It's only when they act, they say, ah, ah, when I am mad. Category 3 are the most dangerous one. Anyone arguing with the madman, you know he's mad. And if you are arguing with him, then you are more mad. Today I want us to deal with category 2 and 3 with a, with a very, very, very good analogy and that was the elder brother of the prodigal son Like I said in our aim the aim of this story is to check ourselves because God will not give us excuses on the day of accounting that external facts hinder your progress no, there is nothing like that we will not be hindered in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us go. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this evening. This morning, let your hand be with us in the name of Jesus. Or that I will still be your word in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. And his elder son, well, let me use this one, so let me be fast. Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he had music and dancing. So there was an ongoing party. So how come there was a party in my house and I was not invited? A party in my house, you didn't call me. Who is the focus of the party? What was the aim of the party? And for which occasion did the party arise? And I did not know. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed a fatting calf because he has him back safe and sound. The party is not for you. The party is not about you. Though you have been walking in the house since your brother left, but the party was because of your brother who we have lost and has come back. In fact, see, your father has given us order to go and bribe big calf. The other brother became angry and refused to go in. So the father went out and did everything. But he answered his father, Look, all these years 
have enslaved him for you. But that word, slaving for you, I never disobey your order. Yet you never gave me even a young goat. So I will celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, I came from a tribe where we are trained with words. That's what my, my, my elders are here. My ethnic group, we did not with words. Let, us, let me read that passage again. But when this son of yours, who was he? Let me, we are coming. Sons of yours, who has wandered your property, see the next sentence, with prostitutes. So, upon everything he got to say, prostitutes, cause you kill a fatty calf for him. I'm very sure we've read this passage over and over, so I don't want that to go by the details. But I want to title this message, Return Now. Return Now. It is very obvious to say, hey, what is that? Let us back up a little bit. We are going to deep, deep, deep the brother's son next week. But today, the so claimed son, who was not prodigal, I put this on the table before everyone that there are two kinds of prodigal children in the house. The one that was obvious, openly prodigal son. We did, we did that one some other time. But today is a secretly prodigal one. The one that you thought, ah, his, his name is Paul Isaac. He's going to church. He's a member of the washers. In fact, the Bethites. And uh, secretly, it's a prodigal son. If it's a prodigal son in the open, you can pray for them. Correct them. You put everything you want to use as a yardstick for a somebody standing. He has passed the mark. Yes, the Bible says it's a prodigal son. The end of this story this morning is that we check ourselves. Are we secretly prodigal before God? Because on that day, He will say, I don't know you for your worker of iniquity. May that word not sound in our hearing in the name of Jesus Christ. I haven't done all. Paul says, Hand. He says, No. He says, I beat my body. I make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I will not be disappointed. But that means it is possible to be a Christian and go to hell. Secretly prodigal son. And I put on the table again. Let me try and dip it into the next teaching. In this, in this history, timeline of the prodigal son, the original one. They said he was going, he was hired to go and feed a pig. Do you know how smelly big pen is? I tell you, beloved, there are two kinds of big pen. The one that was far from home and the one right there in your room. Far is defined, F-A-R. Far is defined as any distance apart from God. So, you can be in Cape Town and be near to God, and you can be in Royal Embassy and be far from, from God. Any distance that is apart from God is come far. So, can I ask, are you far from near? Amen.
If I had made you, made you angry, I would make you like a book for that. Let us not get the truth. Praise God. Matthew 7 3. Why do you look into the splinter that is in your brother's eye and you do not consider the beam that is in your own eyes? Or how would you say to your brother, let me pull the splinter out of the speck out of your eyes when all the time? Mark that word when all the time you are busy looking at somebody's splinter, speck, and there's a beam in your own eyes. In that the, the, next, the next part, in that sense, he improvised. Yes, first remove the beam in your own eyes. That means for you to be able to correct anybody, first of correct yourself. Bible defines Bible. It says, "Apple the readiness to punish all disobedience when your own obedience is complete." Examine yourself. Check your life. Check all. We got help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Help me go back to the to that test. I will be giving us one by one. What by verse? Luke 15, 25. I was asking the verse 25. It says, wait. Yes. Now his older brother was in the field when he came in due to the past and asked and dance next. But he was angry. That is the first sentence. She did we thought the brother was pious, holy brother, serving daddy. After the younger brother said, give me, give me, give me my, my property. So they are talking to people. Somebody, somebody said, said, said it out. Somebody said it in his heart. The younger brother said it through the mouth. So it's not like he ran away. Let's not forget the younger brother now. Let's focus on the older brother. Older brother that finds you and I in the church. The so-called Christians. The one that the Lord is entrusting with his dimension of light to go and shine out right like there. I've been working for you, Lord, I obeyed you. But the first thing was, he was angry. And that is a demonstration of pride. And I wrote in my notes here, he was angry. There is element of pride. There was element of self-centeredness. Is your brother for goodness sake? I admit that he made the wrong step. Or oh, at least, you know, if you, in fact, he too was even coming to become a maid. He was not coming to come and the property. Yes, you didn't even want to see him. After all, I'm the only one now. I don't want anybody in the house when you give your life to Christ. If somebody had been saving about what you do, would you hear it? How selfish or unselfish are you? Number four in my notes now. He was not expecting a return of his brother. He has gone, no, I don't care what happened to him. But that was the decision. We make wrong choices in here and there. And that's when this is not encouraged. When it happens, let your family be like Christ on the cross, always open to receive them back. He was not expecting. And number five on my note, he was not after the happiness of his father. How do I know? The father saw the younger one afar. He ran. How would the father see his son afar if he was not keenly looking? Hey, what did you show? What did you show? So, what? Because it is very rare to find what you are looking for. For you to use the word find, you must have been looking. He saw and said, A man. Do you know that a Jewish people don't rear peace? It's a law. So, when he ran, as we know, he didn't see that he was. He was but when he came nearer and he smelled the stench, what do you expect the father to do? Ew! No, he ignored the ew. He jumped on his neck and kissed him. Let me associate with your big poo. You have forced my son. Do you remember the Bible said, I have not love with everlasting love? That was why we were saved. But when now we were saved, we are, we are now beginning to understand the 
stage of the big thing on the fellow brethren. Is that not what we are doing now? By our characters, association of Christians, and the folks of the unbelievers. He did not say run from them. He said show them love like he did to you. He kissed him. But the elder brother was not interested. Now, yes, my dad, Baba, I'm going to you to die. Because as long as you die, this, all this thing belongs to me. So when he heard of the brother, what? This thing has come again. Give me verse 29. He says, he has a, no, this many years I have been serving you. I never transgress. What does that tell you? I did not see no. Who says you did not see? If you say with that, you are without sin, you lie, Abi. Abi, you are in you. Self righteousness. No, I'm a Christian. I, I go to church. I pay my tithes. So you are not looking at the people that was Pharisees now. Self righteousness. He was lamenting about what he has done. Jealousy. Jealousy. Somebody, now, now, you are doing part of my brother. Then, then, I'm going to be serving you. Jealousy. Do you find that in the church or not? Be true to yourself. Don't forget the goal. The goal is to hear what I am saying and quickly exchange your life. As I am doing to mine too. Because, like my mentor Paul, he says, I beat my body, I make it my slave. So that after I have preached, I myself. They are doing it in the record. I was even listening to it myself at home. So me too, I will sit down and check. Today I did us. Thank you. No. And I live self righteous. Shh. Father, please forgive me. And I removed it so that I will be better off. He began to lament. Amen. He says, I have never transgressed your command at any time. Yet, you never give me a young goat. So the reason why I was not seeing. When I was walking with maybe one day you will give me good. I am not serving because I love him. I'm telling that, that that maybe one day he will say, ah, take around. And if you are blessed and not that sad, you're not another church. True or false? Or you, you can keep going to that church and yet you go to begin to look at one eye in six feet two on another side. I've been serving you. I really in my head. The reason why I'm serving you, sir, is that I want the good. But you never gave me. Me too, I didn't complain to me because I didn't have the, the, the boldness to complain. But jealousy brought up his intent. Can you see this same thing in the disciples? When John and James said to Christ, can I sit here and the Bible says, the other thing were indignant. You never, you don't know you. And that's why come to church to hear this will help. He did not have the importance of saying, that thing I want to go to. But it was sad, hoping that that thing will remember his heart. Is he a witch? <coughs> but jealousy brought us his wrong motive. If you read this verse very well, there is something called resentment there. He resented his brother. When a soul gives his life to Christ, there is a joy in heaven. But in the church, you are welcome in the name of the Lord. Amen. That's the end. No follow up, no calling, no checking, no teaching, nothing. So they come. They only get that one minute song and they go back home. Yes, they get the big old place. The, the next Sunday, they sit down like a stranger in the church. What do you expect? Go to the beer parlor. If you don't have money to drink, just be under there. Somebody will buy you a drink, two of us. But how come it is in the church? Your, your car is empty. The sister, the brother is walking on the road. God bless you. And they are going. Resentment. Listen, I'm not going to be able to, to, to get there. You can be in a big pain and you don't even know. You can be having all these things and you don't even know. That's why it is self examination. He 
had a secret lust, L-U-S-T. He wanted a goat. That was the motive behind what he was doing. Not because he loved the father. Secret lust. And because he could not get what he was, what he wanted, he was serving the father grudgingly. It was this occasion that brought it. Hey, I want a good. Hey, give me a good. I want a good. Oh, hey, you see now, today is my birthday. They give me a good. I have a hey, hey. It was in this church some years ago. Somebody had posted me by the door there. He says, Pastor. I came into the church. Nobody is permitted to carry my bag. I said, What? Hey, I don't to carry my bag. I said, Are you in the church or in the conference room? I said, What? What? I mean, you should carry my bag. I said, Who are the people who will carry your bag? From your house, who carry your bag? I said, So if you come from the house to the door, what can you get the door to the, the, the stairs to the, to the chair? Will that not kill you? This is redeemed Christian church of God, not of man. We are going to honor you in the best possible way. But we are not going to idolize you. Then I will go to the place where I can go to the place where you are carrying your bag. You don't worship man here. And she left. Bye, God bless you. Let us know who are of like minds. Who? I don't say, I didn't say we are not just perfect. We are working on our weaknesses. But to idolize man, they are housemates. Verse 30, quickly. Yeah, if this brother were to be in Nigeria at a new man, I know what the father would do to him. <laughs> if this man were to be a new man, let me tell you what they would do. They would turn the back. Like him flat on the floor and carry the most resilient thing and bless the bone. He had the same thing. But when this son of yours, pride is speaking there, that's your son. Harsh word. They were saying, Woe is he who says to his father, What have you begotten? But hey, you said he was a pious man now. That one was a political one, and we didn't put it in the car, but this one. I've told you 12 crackers already. This son of yours, do you have secret pride in your heart? God that you are serving is the God that will check your heart before your hands. This son of yours who has quantified your money. Bitterness. He was bitter that his brother was saved. He was bitter that the brother came back. He was bitter that the father took attention. You are, in fact, I didn't get to the last part. The father said, But you are with me now. You are with me now. And that, what? You are with me. I'm going to be real soon. He was bitter. And he began to say things that the brother has done, unforgiveness. This, this son of yours who squandered when the prostitutes, unforgiveness, somebody offended you, say, hey, see me, see me. One year, seven days, three hours and four minutes, I don't talk to you. Start counting. Or yours is just to just meet my other. Hello, hi. How are you fine? This is the real. The brother sits on the left. You go right, right, left. He's in the church. Unforgiving spirits. Listen, we cannot act the same way. We can never be the same. Do you know the right God Christ went through? With Andrew, a chronic melancholy, and Peter, sanguine. Then that guy was a forward man. Andrew, do you ever hear him? Do you ever hear him? He was going on the king, he went to call Peter. That was all we had him. Very quiet man. And here's the man who is just from Peter to go. And 
And here comes John the Beloved. Are you the only one? John the nickname himself the Beloved. He had a seat beside Christ. Hey, move, move, move. Let me, let me see now with, with, with Christ. And nobody ever got angry. And here is Judas. He's making names. Making plans, and Christ, Christ discipled them all. So, if you are Christ, you will kill all of them. <laughs> we can never be the same. So, when somebody ruffled your feather, eh, it's painful, yes. Remember the love of Christ. He was telling the Father, reminding the Father, the Father had for God. So, I thought, yeah, it's true. Kick that guy out of my house. Unforgiveness, and he was laying accusations against his brother. <laughs> that son of yours, so we are righteous. Look at that, your son, prostitute, squanderer, just like somebody in the Bible. Who was that? Thank you, Lucifer, the accuser of brethren. Pastor, I'm not saying I'm a music person, but do you notice that last? The answer. This guy, for the pastor, did not wear the right uniform. Hmm. I'm just saying, just, just my, my own. So that when we go to the meeting, we say we are rebellious. What are you doing? I accuse her of oppression. If she didn't wear the right head gear, ask her why. What if she didn't wear the clothes? Accuse her of oppression. You are the one that, that, that's correct in everybody's affairs in, 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 in the church. Minister of Home Affairs, real real men, I will never believe in Jesus Christ. You know every bitterness of everybody in the church. You are the center of information of everybody. You are the hardware. Come on now. And God will say, I don't know you. You are a worker of iniquity. Who was there at the DG on Friday? When mommy, mommy SEO was Ministry, what was Paul saying? You cannot hinder my move. You cannot hinder my move. Maybe you're not used to such. But there are elements, altars that are staying. The God of our Father will not move here today. We are here. And if you act loud, you cannot move until we made a move to. to to disband that area before it began to move. I tell you, I was in the spirit. So if you gather like this, don't think everybody is holy. Uh -uh. Don't make, make no mistakes. But if everybody can scan their lives and see, we do hope that we get better. Amen. Okay, last the last two. Then we're gonna pray. Verse 31, 31. My son, the father did not, no, the father ignored his ignorance, this son of yours, and he addressed him, my son. The father says, you are always with me. What does that mean? You have been living in ignorance. You have been living in ignorance. That I am your God does not mean I will automatically supply what you need. You need to ask in this kingdom. It is those that ask that receives. Ignorance. Ignorance. You are with me now and everything I have is yours. What does that mean? Never ask. You didn't ask. You did not receive because you did not ask. If you have asked me before, I will give you a say, say, I will have given you, you did ask. So why are you not blaming me? That one doesn't need to ask. I'm celebrating him. So I have to give him the, I have to show him what celebration is all about. But you have them at your back and call. You didn't ask me. You have been living in ignorance. You never ask. So when you see somebody coming in, it was in this church. A man, you connected back unto God in this church. 
In this six months, he had eight jobs. Some, some, some of them, what, what, what I'm talking about. Six months, he had eight jobs. One, two, three, four, eight in six months. And they were paying him increasing salary until he's out of the country now. And when he was living, he says, brethren, God is here. Ah, I've been like crying. When somebody, who when we are preaching now, as we are talking, we go down and say, man, who is who is spoke? I talk back. You, you, you know that he is here, he can get here, to, 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 to smoke his stuff. He left him. The world kept on moving. And when he became serious, less than six months, question, we hear from what would have two years. We have preach it to us. God is here. He said, let me take a picture with let me take a picture with my pastor. So I was telling them in where 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 I'm going that. Ha! Ah, and we are jealous. And we are angry. And we are bitter. And you are like this brother. You never know that God sees the heart before he places this, this, this on the hands. The brother came the way he was. Plain. Plain. Everlasting. 